everyone, it's Ross, and what you're looking at in front of you is my grapevines. And I've been quite astounded at the amount of fruit that um, these young vines have put out. Even um, last year they put out a pretty decent amount of fruit. And they're only really, uh, this is their, they're two years old, so this is their third year now, their third summer. And the crop's looking really good. It's, I just came back from Japan and looked at everything. And unfortunately, um, I didn't do any spraying this year. I didn't do any bagging this year. And it looks like a lot of my grapes, all of them, have rot. And you can see in here, um, lots of rotted grapes. The, you know, that's what the black color is in there. On every single bunch, there's at least a few uh, grapes with rot on them. This is a, a fungal disease. And it really um, is a problem. It really can be a problem. Um, I've purposely chosen varieties that are not as susceptible to rot or disease. We have uh, a Mars grape here in the middle. And you can see that not, not, I guess not every cluster, this is a cluster that's more exposed to sunlight and air, but you have some here that are not. And without spraying at the, the right time, you know, as soon as the grape cluster flowers and then forms its grapes, and the grapes are, are, are now formed, it's a good idea to spray uh, an antifungal I like to use um, copper, uh, or you can get paper bags, brown paper bags or fruit bags that um, will prevent the spores on the leaves. Um, you can see that my leaves have um, some spores on them. Okay, there, that's, some, that's some Japanese beetle damage there. You can see right here, here's those spores. and. Um, that's where the rot is located and it hits the the leaf there the water and then it, it bounces up off of the water and hits the grapes themselves and if um, things are wet for a period of 24 hours or more the rot can spread and take hold so really not uh, something that's easy to grow here in the mid-atlantic I had good success last year, uh, but that was with spraying. This year, uh, I didn't do that. I wanted to see what would happen, and as a result, we have lots of grapes that have rot on them. Uh, but all is not lost. I think it may be kind of a good thing. Um, just that, you know, these grapes, uh, they're kind of thinning themselves out like that. But we still have a lot of season left before I can eat these grapes. We do. Um, so we're not out of the woods. Uh, the grapes themselves can... Uh, we could still have rot on the, the current grapes that are on there that don't have rot. It's very easy and very likely that some of these grapes will get rot. Um, and the other problem is that if we don't pick up all of the rotted grapes, we don't take them, dispose of them, um, this will continue the problem year after year. Uh, just by them falling on the ground, uh, the rot will continue to be present. So what I'm doing now, I, I was going to, I was actually going to bag them here with uh, organza bags. I figured... Uh, it might be okay, or was getting, maybe I thought about bagging them with uh, brown paper bags, taking off all the all of the rotted fruit first, and then bagging them to protect them from birds. But I don't think that's going to help. Um, I can't spray right now with copper either because it's too warm. It's uh, I think if temperatures are over 80 or something like that, or over 75 copper will completely destroy and burn the leaves so we can't do that 
Um, the best I can do right now is take the trash can here and make sure I get all of the rotted fruit into the trash can and dispose of it. All right, guys, so uh, yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of what I just did to help alleviate any disease pressure, any further rot pressure. Uh, I took off almost all of the rotted fruit, as you can see. Um, I, I staked up a lot of the, uh, the branches to a higher branch here. Uh, either put it over the fence or staked it up to a wire. Um, really tried to improve the airflow in here. I think this is overall just a better, better way of doing it anyway. Um, really getting the, the new canes up high. Uh, ideally, I should have a better trellis system, but this is what I have room for and could afford at the time, so this is what I'm doing. And you can see I cut out a lot of the leaves and just left the clusters of fruit here. And uh, if they all ripen perfectly from this point on, <laughs> we got a real nice crop. But that's probably not going to happen. Um, you can see the Mars grape here. It's just completely packed. Um, I'm happy with this harvest if, it's, if it continues like this. This is really impressive to me. Um, you know, each, each new cane that came out of this vine put out two or three bunches of grapes, which is phenomenal for how old this cane is. I mean, it's so thin and young. So really excited, I guess, for the grapes, um, but really crossing my fingers that the, the rot doesn't continue to spread. And again, like I said in the, in the beginning of this video, what I'll end up doing is um, spraying this, this tree here, or these, these vines with uh, probably some copper uh, when the temperatures cool down a little bit, help with that disease pressure even more than what I just did and we'll probably have some tasty fruit by the end of the season. Anyway guys, um, I've been disposing of these in the trash and all the leaves I cut off, all the fruit that I took off, and yeah, this is the end result. So anyway guys, hope you enjoyed this one. Take care.